Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chapter 9 of AutoCAD. Uh, I am Mr. Dieter. Uh, we will jump right in to Chapter 9. So today, our objectives are you will be able to erase objects. You'll be able to move objects from one base point to another. You'll know how to rotate an object around a base point. You'll be able to enlarge or reduce objects with the scale tool. You'll be able to stretch objects and change the length of lines and arcs with lengthen. Be able to trim away parts of objects at cutting edges and extend objects to boundary edges. Be able to copy objects and make mirror images of that selected object. Know how to create a parallel copy if objects with offset. Be able to make rectangular and polar arrays or objects and be able to create a fillet and a chamfer between two objects. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get right into it. We've got a drawing up here we're going to be doing stuff too. You might recognize this from a previous chapter of the baseball field. So let's start. Uh, draw commands are used to create new objects. Modify commands are used to change existing objects or to use existing objects to create new and similar objects. So for example, these are your draw commands. We already know like a line, circle, an arc, which we talked about earlier. We've already done some of these. Okay, those are all draw commands. Now modify commands are different. So let's talk about some of the drawing commands, okay? We've got line, polyline. What's the difference between line and a polyline? We've already talked about this a little in class. So say I wanna draw, let's, uh, let's uh, do a multiple undo here and undo all the stuff we just did. All right, there we go. So say I wanna draw this rectangle. Okay, so I've drawn a terrible rectangle right here. Now you'll notice that each one of these are individual lines. So I can select on each line individually and it's its own entity. I could delete this one and I could delete any other one I want by itself. Now, if I use a polyline and I draw the exact similar rectangle the exact same way, okay, now, when I go to select this, it is one object. I cannot select just one part of it and delete it. If I delete it, it deletes the whole thing. That's the difference between lines and polylines. And also with polylines, you can do other things. You know, you can be setting lines and then you can change it to arc. And you can draw a curve. And then you can change it back to line. And then go back to drawing straight lines. All things that you can do with a polyline that you can't do with just a typical line. So that's what makes polyline different than that. Circle, you guys already know, you've got center radius, center diameter, a two-point circle, a three-point circle, tan, tan radius, and tan, tan, tan. Tan is tangent. That means you can make it tangent to other things. So say if I wanted a circle to be tangent to this and this, I could do a tan, 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 and I could say this circle is going to start here. It's going to touch this. It's going to touch this. It's going to touch this, and then it draws my circle in that box right there. So that's a tan, tan, tan. So there's all different ways, but we normally just do center radius or center diameter, depending on what it is called for on the drawing. And then you've got arc. Three point is what it defaults to, but there's all these different ones. If you want to know more about them, we can talk about it during class. I'm not going to go through the full scale of these tools at the moment. And you've got your rectangle or your polygon. If you want to make a polygon, you can do that. Maybe. So if you want to make a polygon, you click on it, you can draw a polygon, but it's not letting me for some, oh yeah, I had to enter the number of sides, four number of sides, inscribed in a circle. So anyway, that's just a square. But yes, you can do polygons as well. Um, and you do have to pick your sides when you do those. You've got center circle, You've got a ellipse, I mean, center circle, axis, ellipse, local arc. So there's different ways you can do that. And this is hatch. We will talk about this later. We don't really do hatch now, but you can fill something with a solid color or a pattern if you'd like to. The scale is too big right now for you to see the pattern in there. But anyway, you can do that. That is hatch. So those are your drawing tools. Now, Let's talk about modify commands. All modify commands are used to affect existing geometry. So draw draws new geometry 
and modify is existing geometry. This can be done by one of two methods. And we'll talk about those later, but you can only, I mean, uh, since the modify commands are, are in the second tab here. And again, on the draw commands, there's a lot more down here. If you want to know more about them, we'll talk about it. I know we talked about uh, multiple points today when we were dealing, or the, uh, the, the last week when we were dealing with the baseball or the, um, not the baseball field, sorry, guys, the path that we were drawing that had all the points on it, multiple points. But anyway, modify. You've got move, pretty self-explanatory. You can select something and you can move it where you want. You've got copy, which means I could take this, make a copy of it and put it somewhere else. You've got stretch. Say I want to take this line and I want to stretch it out. I can take it and just stretch it wherever I want to stretch it. Um, or this circle would probably be a better example of stretch. You can stretch it anyway. Okay. Then you've got, we're going to talk about fillet and array later in this chapter, but you've got rotate, which is how you rotate something. Mirror to make a, say I wanted to mirror this whole thing. I would select it, select a mirror. Say I want it to mirror from here. And then you have the same thing made a second time and you put it in place so that's mirror and then of course scale would be to change the size of something so like this is too large so let's click on scale click here and you can scale it down and make it a smaller size then trim and extend are together and again the shortcuts for all these are my favorite things to do i don't ever use these buttons up here i mean maybe one day but not right now we'll talk about the shortcut keys for those here in just a few moments. And this may be a longer video, I apologize for that, but there's a lot to cover on this. A so fill it in array, we'll cover erase, explode. And again, remember we talked about polylines a minute ago. Say I draw this whole polyline here all the way around. And then I'm like, I wanna get rid of this one line right here. How do I do that? Well, I would select the polyline. I would use the explode command. And now they are all individual lines. I can delete just the one line that I wanna delete, okay? And now to erase it, it takes more work because it's not a polyline anymore. Okay. So, and then offset, another big one. Say I want this line to go over here 10 feet. I would click offset, select this line. And right now it's set to offset 79 feet. So that's what it did. So those are all important commands that we will use throughout the time. So when you construct a selection, when you construct a selection set in... Oh, never mind. Sorry. Uh, selecting a desired set of objects with a pick box or auto options before invoking. So let me show you the difference between a window and a lasso. So a window would look like that. All right. I've selected everything with a window. Or you can also come from this direction, select everything with a window. That's a window for selecting stuff. A lasso is when you hold the mouse button down. It comes up with this weird, you guys have already seen this. It's kind of weird uh, lasso, basically. But with that, you can select certain things, like say, I want to grab this, this, but I don't want to grab something else. Well, I can skip around it and then grab that. So lasso is a way to grab lots of different things in one grab, whereas the window just grabs everything inside of that window. And you notice it's different colors. If you go this way, it just selects whatever you grab the entire line of. And if you go this way, it'll select whatever so green will select whatever you cross, and blue will select whoop, blue will select whatever you grab the entire thing. So if I try to select this line with blue and do it like that, it's not going to work. But if I do it with the green one, it will grab it. So that's the difference between those two right there. All right, when with the move command, you can use any coordinate method to move something, right? So if I want to move this circle. Select it and I say move. Select base point. It's going to be there and I can move it around, right? I can do it that way. Down here, I can put new coordinates. I can do it all different ways. Normally, you're just going to move it to where you want it to be. But if it tells you to move it to certain coordinates, that's easy to do. You just type in those coordinates, you move it to those coordinates, and you're good to go, right? That's the move command. And I was going to tell you some of the aliases. So line is L. If I type L, See, comes up, the first one is line, and there's all these other ones as well. 
that you can look at, right? But line is the first one under L. So L is the shortcut key for line. Polyline is just P line. Okay, thank you. And it gives you hints too. So P line does polyline. Circle is simply C. There's your circle. Arc is A. Comes up with arc. All right, what do you think rectangle is? Rec. Rec is rectangle. And I use these, like I said, for everything. Ellipse is E L L ellipse. Hatch. H A T. Hatch. There you go. And there's all different commands under that too. Same thing with your these commands for move, you would just do M. For copy, you would do C O. For stretch, S T R. For rotate, R O. For mirror, M I. Maybe the M would be better. M I is mirror. Trim, T R. Extend EX, explode EXP L. But you see it comes up. EXP L will get you to explode. And then offset is OFF. And like I said, there's a bunch more. If you want to know more about them, we can talk about it during class, but I'm not going to waste too much time on this presentation talking about that. All right. All right. After selecting an object, Let's talk about rotating. After selecting an object, how do you rotate it? Well, you can rotate it. Say I want to rotate this whole thing. So I'm going to grab this whole baseball diamond and say I want it to be pointed this way. So I'm going to do RO for rotate. Select base point. So I know that this point right here, zoom in to make sure you get the right place. So it's 2520 right there. Now, that's my base point now. I can say, I can rotate it freehand like this and just say, hey, I'm going around to this other side right here. Or I can say, I want you to rotate it 270 degrees. Then I'm gonna do that. So there's lots of different ways to rotate. But rotate, you always make sure you select the correct base point. If you have to zoom in, zoom in because you don't wanna select the wrong thing, that would not be good. That's the rotate command. So there'll be a question I know about that. All right, the scale command is used to increase or decrease. So I type SC for scale, and I select this whole thing. And I'm like, ah, this baseball diamond is too small. I want to scale it to two times its size. Now you can do what I'm doing and just stretch it in and out. Once again, you can have a scale factor. Say I want to go up by two. So I went up by two. Scale is not something that we'll use a ton of, but we will use it, so you need to be aware of it. All right, what about lengthening and shortening a line? Say you want this outfield to go out further. I want to lengthen that line a certain distance. So my favorite way to do it is I would take the line starts right here. So I would take this right here, do an offset. Say I want to offset it 200 feet. So I'm going to select this line and offset it up 200 or 200 inches, sorry, this is in feet and I did that in inches, so it didn't go very far. So let's try that again, let's do it in feet. I want to offset 200 feet. This one's different because it's an architecture. All right, 200 feet goes to there. Now I want to trim this off. So I use the TR for the trim command. And I say, I want to trim this line and it automatically picks where to trim it at. Boom, your line is trimmed. Now, if I say, never mind, I did that wrong, I'm going to extend it back. EX, click on this, and it goes right back to where it was. Trim and extend are great, a great way to draw things, a great way to do all kinds of stuff. All right, you can toggle between trim and extend by using the shift key, by the way. So if I'm in a trim command, I want to trim this right here, and then I want to re-extend it, shift, Shift, and now it extends back in. You have to hold shift down. So again, trim, hold shift down, extend, and there we go. We're back at it again, okay? So shift 
you can toggle between trim and extend holding the shift key, not just using it. So you can toggle between the two. So if you're going back and forth, you don't have to keep going trim and then stop and then extend and then stop and then trim. You can just go with it. So. All right. Um, when using the break, when using break with a circle, the break space is always created in a counterclockwise direction. So breaking a circle, it's always in a counterclockwise direction. We don't break a lot of circles, but I know that's on the quiz. So I wanted to mention it so that you guys had it in front of you uh, as you get ready for the quiz. So remember, break always goes in a counterclockwise direction on a circle. All right, the join command allows you to join two of the same object, for example, two collinear lines into one object. So it would be two lines into one line. So if I have a line here, oh, L, enter, line here, and a line here, and I want to put those together, I would use the join command, join. Select the first line, and select this one, select the second line, select that one, enter, and now, that is a polyline instead of a line. So join turns a line into a polyline, like explode turns a polyline into a line. Okay, difference between join and explode. Join will put them together, explode will take them apart. All right, the mirror command allows you to do the fo all the following except what? That's gonna be a question on the quiz. After selecting an object, you can create two points specifying a rubber band line or a mirror line about which to mirror. So we've talked about mirroring a little bit, but if you want to mirror something, I can take this whole thing, select this point here. There's the rubber band line they're talking about. I'm going to mirror it around that. I want to click it right here so that it is the same. And now we have double vision baseball fields. Of course, let's do that again. I can show you it to completion instead of cutting it off early. So you mirror around there, up here, and then it asks you erase source object. So you can get rid of the original one by clicking no, or by clicking yes, or click no and keep both of them. It's up to you. So that's now back to back baseball fields. B, you kind of suck to play on those fields that close together. Okay. So that is your mirror object, and I'm trying to run through these guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying. This is, like I said, this is going to be a longer one. I apologize for that, but we got to get through this so that you guys can get to the quiz, so we can get to the assignments next week. And we still haven't gotten to array, which is very important for this week's assignment, or for the today's assignment, I should say, or tomorrow's, or whatever day you're watching this. Okay, so when you're talking about that, let's talk about different kinds of arrays, which is where we are. There are... Array is right here. You've got rectangular, path, and polar. We're going to be using rectangular and polar in this week's assignment. So let me exit out of this and go into a different CAD drawing. And let's make a rectangle. And inside that rectangle, let's make a circle. You know what? Let's do this a better way. Let's make a circle. Let's make it 10. Let's make another circle from the center of that circle. We'll make it eight. And then we'll put a rectangle inside of all that. Okay, so we're going to make an array about this thing right here. So let's say the first thing I want to do is we're going to draw a tiny circle right at the top of this. Let's make it a 0.3 circle there. And we're going to draw another one right here that is 0.2. Okay, so what if I want this to go all the way around this circle? Do you want to have to draw a circle all the way around? You don't. That's where array comes in. Array is fantastic. Array is very helpful. So for this, we're going to need a polar or circular array. So I'm going to select polar array because you're going around a circle. All right, the first thing it says is select object. So the object is going to be this circle right here. Then it says specify center point of array. It's going to be the center of the big circle, which is right here. And then you see some circles pop up and say, I want, oh, I don't know, 
30 circles going around that thing. Okay, now you can see instead of having to draw all 30 of those circles, that array has shown up. And there's only one row on this because it is just going around that circle. Now say I want to do it again. Let's do another array. This will be our object. This will be our circle, except this time we only want 15. So now you have 15 circles going around that. See how quickly I was able to do that as opposed to having to draw a circle, offset, or whatever to make it go all the way around that circle. But say you have a little circle inside this. That's point 0.2. And you want to fill this thing up. Well, how long was this line? We have to measure it to find out because I didn't measure it when I put it up. 9.3087. That's great. Let's change that to 10. So we'll do a line from here to here. You know what? We'll just leave it at what it is. All right. So we want to put circles all inside this. This is just for an example. I'm getting too picky now. So we're going to change this to a rectangular array. This will be our object. OK, so you can kind of see what it did. We want our columns. We're going to want, oh, how many? Maybe 15 columns. That's good. How many rows are we going to want? We're going to want 15 rows. Now, see, it's going the wrong direction. So we need to be able to change that direction. So we want it to go down instead of up. So for that, let's see here. What did I do wrong? So you guys get to see me mess up. Isn't that great? All right, an array, this. We got 15 columns. We want it to go the other direction like that. We just tell it. Sorry about that. There you go. There we go. OK. Oh. And we want it to be you know, 20 rows. That was too many, so we can back it off to 15 rows. Oh, Got to be in that. Back it off to 15 rows. Well, anyway, but there's how you do it. You guys can see now. Now, what if with an array, we can move it around and put it where it looks a little bit nicer. And what about with an array? Okay, I want to get rid of all the circles that wound up outside of this, but guess what? You can't select on just one circle because it's an array. Well, we talked about it earlier. The explode command. So now I've exploded the entire array. Now I can delete all of the circles that are not inside of that box like I want them to be. And I can use this. And there you go. Now I just have them inside that box. So that is kind of a really short, really fast way to use array. OK, last thing I want to talk about today is a fillet. OK, so say I want the corners of this box to be circular. And I kind of talked about this with some of you today with some of the things we did. This is called a fillet. So right now, it's set to just a square fillet, which it already has. So we don't want that. We want a radius. So we're going to do fillet R for radius, enter. Let's make a radius of 1, enter. Now when I select this corner and this corner, it automatically curves that for me. OK, that is a fillet. So there is a really quick, quick lesson, as quick as I can make it, guys, on fillet, on arrays, on modify tools, on draw tools. All of those are going to be on your quiz coming up. So good luck on the quiz. Uh, enjoy it. And then uh, you guys will see you in class and we will go over the actual drawings and any questions you guys have for me will cover in class. So I hope you guys. Uh, Hope that helped you, and we will talk to you guys on the next one.